Let's take a look at creating an impeller housing in Onshape. Here I am in a document. Let's go to the plus button at the lower left hand corner. From here, I can create a new part studio. And first thing I'm going to do is verify my set of units. Let me click on the document menu and then choose workspace units. Right now I am in millimeters. That is good. Everything else here looks fine. And so in this part for creating the impeller housing, we're going to take a look at creating sketches and extrude a revolve, a loft fillets, a shell and a hole. Let's get started by creating our first sketch. I'm going to sketch on the plane called front. So I will click on it and then use the right mouse button to get to new sketch. Let me use the right mouse button again to view normal to the sketch plane. And the first feature is going to start off with a circle. I'm going to let it snap right to the middle of the origin. And this circle needs to be pretty big. Let me just drag it out a distance. Then I will click on the dimension icon and let's pick the circle and then position where we want it to be and then click the left mouse button. And this circle is going to be a diameter of 340. Let's hit the check mark to complete the sketch. And now I'm going to extrude it. Let's click on the extrude command for the face. Let's pick the circle we just sketched. And in the first direction, we're going to do a blind depth of 115. Let's check the box for second end position. And we're going to do a blind depth in the other direction of 105. So it's not exactly symmetric. It's pretty close. But the second end position allows us to do a different value in that direction. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. And the next feature that we are going to create is going to be a revolve. This is going to be located on the plane called top. Right now it's in the middle of my model. So I will select it out of the feature list. And then let's right click and choose to create a new sketch. Let me rotate the model slightly. And yeah, let's view normal to the plane. I always find that to be more convenient. I'm going to start off by creating some construction lines. Let's click on construction and then the line icon and I will let it snap in here. This will just help me for later on when I'm creating symmetry. And let's then create a, another construction line. And this one is going to go through the center and this will facilitate one of my dimensions. I actually don't need this one, but I like it visually to be there. And then a, another one, and this is going to be the axis of revolution for the feature that I'm going to create. Let's hit the escape key. It's in blue because it is not fully dimensioned. We will dimension it from here to here using the left mouse button and then locate it a distance. Wow, I got pretty close. 115. And the shape of this feature is going to be a rectangle. Let's do our rectangle about from here to here. Hit the escape key to get out of creating the rectangle and throw on some different dimensions. So let's see, let's dimension and this line from this one is going to be a distance of 170. And we're going to use as the width of our first revolve, this will be 160. And this dimension will be 110. I meant to throw in my symmetry constraint first, but I did not. Let's do that now. Let's go to symmetric and pick the construction line and then this line and this line and the sketch adjust. Nothing is in blue except for those little points there. So our sketch is ready. Let's hit the check mark. I'm going to rotate the model slightly. Then let's choose to create our revolve. And for the face that I want to use, I will right click and use select other. 
and that way I can get to the face that is blocked by the first face. And for the revolve axis, I'm going to pick that other construction line that I created. Right now, it is giving me a full revolve. Let's choose one direction. And I'll grab this and drag it just for visualization purposes. And it actually snapped to 90 degrees. That's good. I like that. And it is going to be merged with the only part that I'm creating. Everything looks good in my dialog box. Let's hit the check mark to complete that. So for the next feature, I'm going to create a loft and I'm going to use the face of this surface and then two other different sketches that I need to create. And for those sketches, I need to start off with a sketch plane. Let's create from this surface right mouse click and then choose offset plane and offset in this direction the first one is going to be offset a distance of 125 and then i will hit the check mark Let, let's now select our plane and create a new sketch and once again i always like to view normal to the sketch it really helps me out and let's see for this one let's also throw in a center line or excuse me a construction line that i can use for symmetry later on and let it inference into that i like to display them pretty long on here so that's good let's hit the escape key and the shape of this is once again going to be a rectangle and it's going to be slightly bigger than the one that's already in there. Let's hit the escape key. I'm going to rotate slightly so I can throw in some constraints. Let's use coincident so that this line lies right on the edge of that face. Now I will go to symmetry and pick the construction line and the two lines that I want to be symmetric about that. Now we can go to dimension and let's do the short dimension first this one is going to be a length of 130 and this one let's make that wow i got really close again 190. so that's good let's hit the check mark and let me start renaming some of these just because they start to get a little cluttered and confusing to me this is going to be my loft section to plane and this is going to be oops actually forgot to deselect first let's rename this one and this is going to be my loft section to sketch i get confused if i just see a whole bunch of like you know plane sketch blah 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 okay so that's good and i actually don't need this plane anymore so let's turn off its display Let's create a, another plane offset from this surface. And one thing to mention, you want to consider your design intent here. I'm dimensioning my next section off of the first section, but you could dimension it off of the previous plane. Think about how your model might change in the future and use that to determine how you're going to measure things and what you're going to dimension them off of and use as references. So this offset distance will be 250. And while I'm here, I might as well use the pencil icon to name this my loft section three plane and hit the enter key. Now let's hit the check mark. Let's select the plane, right click and new sketch, right click and view normal to the sketch plane and instead of creating a construction line this time i can actually use this existing construction line for my other symmetry that i'm going to put in so let's just sketch in our rectangle and eyeball it and now i'm going to rotate just so i can see things in perspective let's now put in some of our constraints like let's put in the coincident between this line in the sketch and this edge in the model and let's now go to symmetry and I will pick the construction line 
and then this line in this line. And I like how you can use construction lines from one sketch in another sketch. Let's put in our dimensions and let's see this width. This is going to be a value of 230 and this one will be a value of 190. I was really off that time on my dimensions. So let's hit the check mark. Let's hide the other plane. Let's go to the sketch. And while I'm here, let's rename it. And this will be my loft section three sketch. Wonderful. Let's now create our loft. To create the loft, we will use this icon. So I will click on it. And for the profiles, I will left click on this face for the first profile and then this sketch face for the second profile and then this one for the third profile. And just to make a slight adjustment to this one, for the start profile condition, if I go to the drop down list, by default it's set to none. You could choose to be normal to the profile, tangent to the profile, or match the tangent of the geometry or match the curvature of the geometry. In this case, I want to match the geometry. And if you are taking a look, you might have seen it make a slight adjustment in the shape. So I really like that. Let's hit the, oh yeah, but just want to mention that there are a bunch of other different options in here for creating lofts, like putting in guides and continuity or specifying a path, matching connections. So really a lot of functionality in the loft feature for creating geometry by taking a bunch of sections and sort of blending them together. Let's hit the check mark to complete the loft. And now I need to put in some fillets. Let's go to the fillet command. And for this one, I'm going to pick the four side edges. And it's really small right now. Let's change the value so you can see it. Let's make it big, a value of 35. And you'll notice that because we have tangent propagation turned on, it's automatically continuing along to the other part of the revolve feature. And let's left click on that edge, rotate the model, and pick the corresponding edges on the other side. Let me move this over so you can see it. And so that looks wonderful. Let's hit the check mark. And the next entity that I'm going to put in, we want to fill it for how this part of the housing blends into the main extrude. So let's put in a, another fillet. You can pick on the side. For some reason, I like to pick in the middle. And this one will have a radius of 15. Hit the Enter key. Just some beautiful blending of geometry in there. I especially like how it comes together in the point here uh, between the two fillets. Let's hit the check mark for that one. And now we need to hollow out our part. So let's go to the shell command right here in our main ribbon. And we can select the faces that we want to remove. Well, we do need air to go through here and also through this face for the shell thickness right now it's 2.5 which is much smaller than we want let's change this to a value of 10 and everything looks great let's hit the check mark for the shell my planes are still visible i don't need them anymore for this video let's use the letter p in order to turn off their display and the last feature that we're going to put into the part in this video is going to be a hole that the impeller main rod, main axis is going to go through. This is, after all, an impeller housing. And so to create the hole, normally you would create a sketch first, but I don't need to in this particular situation. Let's click on the hole command. And let's see, right now it has a diameter of 15. Might as well change that to 80. And we're creating a simple hole. We're not going to have a counter bore or a counter sink. And this is just going to be a through hole. You could do it as blind, but 
there's nothing on the other side that is going to intersect. And the reason that I don't need to use a sketch point is one of the other options is to use a mate connector. So when I click on the mate connector icon, then it'll recognize, hey, the center of this face is a potential mate connector. So you can see where the hole is going to go through the parts. That looks great. Let's hit the check mark. And there you can see our geometry for the impeller housing so far. And in the next video, we will use sketches and extrudes and a rib and some holes and some mirrors and some more fillets in order to create the flange on the end and also the mounting locations and some stiffeners on the back and the front of the housing. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.